Will you please share with me in 1 Samuel chapter 17? 1 Samuel says, very familiar scripture, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, verse 37, moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Amen. You may take your seats for a few moments. We have this time is pressing already. We just honor God for praise. But I want to lift uh, this verse again because now we find both Saul and Israel on one mountain and the opposing enemy, the Philistines, on another mountain. And there's a valley in the middle. And here it is. God's people now are having to face uh, this giant of a man who represented the Philistine army. But the word of God says what David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Look at verse 37 again. I get, Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will look deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. I want to just share for a few moments from David's uh, reenactment Reenactment of the lion and the bear experience. Um, pray with us from the subject, preparing for your next win. Preparing for your next win. I hope you pray with us today. As I mentioned, this is a very familiar story. Most of us learned it in Sunday school about David and Goliath. Is one of those stories that have been told to us throughout the decades, throughout the centuries, about how David, a little boy, inexperienced in warfare, overcomes, defeats a giant who was experienced in warfare from his youth. But I dare not go into deep details about the actual fight, but I want to talk about the preparation for the fight. The word prepare simply means to make ready beforehand, before something comes or before use or activity. This is important because now David finds himself following his father's wishes. Here it is, David's brothers, three of his brothers are on the battleground with Saul and the Israel's army, and yet they are intimidated from one man named Goliath. Goliath represents the worst of our fears. Goliath represents obstacles that we have been afraid to embrace. Goliath represents the epitome of evil and defeat. But here it is now, if you walk with me through the text, that following his father's wishes, Jesse's wishes, to check the overall well-being of his three brothers on the battlefield, these siblings become insulting and indignant to their little brother named David. David, who was keeping Jesse's sheep, was summoned by his father to do a wellness check on his three brothers and Israel's army. Pray with me, if you will. These siblings, 
when they saw David, began to insult him and become very indignant with their little brother. They made fun of him and said, you ought to be home watching over father's sheep. Now, it, 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 it really was fueled by jealousy and by resentment. Resentment or jealousy is not just reserved for those on the outside of your home, but resentment and jealousy can come from those who have watched you grow and grow unlike them. Here it is, if you pray with us, David, being the youngest son out of eight brothers, was responsible for tending the sheep and the goats while his brothers carried out supposedly more noble tasks. I need for y'all to just walk with me and listen to the, as I build the text. I, 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 here it is, because now his brothers were on the battlefield defending Israel while he was responsible for tending sheep. They tried to humiliate him and degrade his acts as inferior. But yet David handled the minuscule task with commitment and a great degree of responsibility. If my assignment is from my father is but to watch over the sheep and the goats, it will be done with a level of commitment and a degree of responsibility. David ignored, y'all had to pray with me right now, David ignored their begrudging attitudes because he fully understood his assignment as a shepherd boy. If, if, if he had shirked his responsibility, it would have cost the family valuable livestock and would have affected their livelihood. David takes on this minuscule task with a level of commitment and with a level of urgency. David, while fulfilling his door dash delivery to the battlefield heard about this giant named Goliath who defied and disrespected Israel's God. Saul, Saul at this point doesn't have an answer for the giant called Goliath. I, I need y'all help. I love this word. Saul at this point being the king of Israel, a warrior, does not have a response to Goliath's taunts. Goliath, Goliath here, again, is he the end of your run? The reason you tap out and call it quits. Is Goliath, is he the overwhelming obstacle you never wanted to encounter? Or is he, Goliath, the fear that causes you to retreat? We all have had some Goliath in our existence. Is he the one assignment that you tried to avoid and run away from? Or will Goliath be another testimony of your steadfastness as you supposedly are the underdog in this occasion? I, I hear you, Pastor Omar. Uh, the underdogs can't win the battle. And here we find ourselves that, 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 that David is facing, facing the opportunity to show the world what he's been practicing. Stay with me now. There's a 19th century Episcopal priest and abolitionist who was opposed to slavery named uh, Bishop Phillips Brooks. He wrote this. He says, do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger men and women. Do not pray for tasks equal to your power. Pray for power equal to your task. I don't know if that helped you or not, but it definitely helped me. You don't tap into the depth of God's resources until you attempt something you can handle by yourself. Ah, okay, okay, help me, help me. Help me, many, many of us have missed God's resources because we dared enter a platform that caused us to trust him more than we trusted ourselves. David's confidence in defeating Goliath, a man of war, was called ridiculous by King Saul. Can I tell the story, church? Uh, after Saul heard what David wanted to do, Saul says, that sounds ridiculous. You want to go up against a man who's been fighting 
since is youth, and you ain't nothing but a little boy who keeps your father's sheep and goats. But David now, David does what I call, he engages the reproductive power of testimonies. <laughs> yeah, y'all just missed that. What David does, he engages the reproductive power of testimony. David said, I killed a bear and a lion. Y'all just missed me. He engages in the reproductive power of testimonies because if you've been through it and won while you're going through it, it now becomes a testimony of the resilience of your fight and God's power in your life. David said, I killed a lion and a bear. Practice preparation. Listen, preparation for something greater something more complicated and if you don't handle this right said this right if you don't handle this moment correctly then that which is inevitably headed your way will defeat you you have to prepare today come on with me now we've all heard the adage practice makes perfect but that isn't really the truth. Practice doesn't always make perfect. The practice is only made perfect when the practice is done well. Y'all help me. The practice is only made perfect when the practice is done well and mistakes are corrected. You can't keep handling your training ground haphazardly because it will produce a similar level of intensity when you are called upon to execute your next assignment. If you prepare slowfully or inattentively, you will now employ the same techniques in your real life scenarios. Some of you are not ready to defeat the devil because you have been flirting and hanging out with them all week long. I can't get no help in the house today. I'm going I'm to preach this thing. Here it is now because your practice makes perfect when you hang out with strength. Iron sharpens iron. But if you've been hanging around a piece of weak timber all week long, when it's time for you to stand against your Goliath, you will fight him as though you've been hanging out with weak timber. Here it is. Here it is, church. You can't plan for tomorrow and waste today. The lesson is the blessing. Oh, let me help you 21st century people because you want cars and you want new houses. But listen to you, there are some devils who got houses and cars. You got to want more than houses and cars. You got to want some strength to overcome that which is within you. The lesson is the blessing. God doesn't want you to waste any of your experiences, the good, the bad, or the ugly. They all have valuable lessons to teach us about God, ourselves, and about others. Y'all got to help me preach this thing today. I'm almost there. Here it is. David learned how to go after what the father put in his care. <laughs> Here it is. He learned how to go after what his father put in his care and it was up to him to retrieve what the enemy stole. I got to go get my father's stuff back. He gave me some stuff that I should have watched over but the enemy snuck in when I wasn't looking. But even if it snuck in when I wasn't looking, I'm not going to let him win because he took what belonged to my father. My father put me in ownership of it or put me in responsibility for it and it slipped out of my fingers. But yet, David said, I went after both the lion and the bear and I retrieved what the devil, what the enemy stole. God gave me stewardship over Help me somebody. We got to stop letting the devil take what God gave us stewardship over. We just can't say what the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Something the Lord didn't take away. It was the enemy. The Lord gave it, but the enemy stole it. And it's up to you to go after. 
y'all, y'all gotta help me. What the enemy took from you. Notice something as we examine our text again today, the lion and the bear. David understood and recognized the importance and value of what was taken from his father's sheepfold. You got to stop pursuing what's not in the sheepfold. <laughs> Help me somebody. Uh, here it is in 2021. In their own right, the lion and the bear were more than formidable opponents that required calculation, finesse, and determination. Let me say it again. They were such a fierce opponent that required calculation, finesse, and determination. You don't think David went after these lions and bears and came out of it without any significant scars, do you? No, no. A scarless life means that your test or trial wasn't enough of a challenge to deepen your dependency or need for God. I'm grateful God. I'm grateful now that I've got some scars. I've got some testimonies that the Lord has brought me through it. Here it is now. I remember the words of Jesus when Jesus saw Thomas. The Thomas put your fingers in my wounds. Let me show you my scars on my feet and my head. Signifying that he's taking what has previously been thrown at him and Jesus survived through the grace of God. Thomas, look at my hand. Thomas, look at my feet. Thomas, look at my head. Thomas, look at my side. Put your finger in the place they thought they would have, they, they kill me. Put your finger in the place where they nailed me to the cross. Put your finger in the place where they pierced me in my side. These now are battle scars. And you ought to be praising God when folk remind you of who you used to be. You ought to tell them, I remember too. But I also remember how the Lord forgave me and came after me and placed my feet in a place that was sound and sturdy. I'm trying to move on, church. It is the lion and the bear. They were significantly less of a threat than Goliath. Why? Because the lion and the bear only stole from Jesse's fold. But Goliath was interrupting the kingdom agenda. <laughs> you can't touch God's anointed. When God has given them assignment, you must either move out of the way or simply keep your mouth shut. Because God is not going to allow his kingdom agenda to become null and void based upon somebody coming in and stealing it. Uh-huh, y'all help me. Preparation means preparation builds character. Can I just take my time? Guys, two more marital minutes, y'all. <laughs> Come on, help me. Preparation, what? Preparation builds character, discipline, and credibility. Preparation helps you to overcome some fears of the unknown. God isn't getting you ready to stay consciously where you are, but rather you are on a journey and God is getting you ready for the place you're going. God is not just an event planner, but God is a God who is a sustainer of righteous behavior. Oh, help me, help me, help me. Here it is, church, as I move on, God says that that preparation builds character, discipline, and credibility. Listen to these things I share with you and I'll be finished today. Preparation promotes self-discipline or positive habits. I'm almost there. When we routinely prepare ourselves for the predictable or unexpected, we enhance our own self-discipline. One of the reasons that we don't get as much from God, and I don't mean things, I mean grace, mercy, knowledge, information, skill. What I, I don't mean just harvesting and come, come on, I don't mean new tailor made suits and rings and watches. I, that's, anybody can get that if you got good credit. What I'm talking about is a life of self discipline. 
This is important because preparation promotes self-discipline or positive habits. The act of becoming, pray with me, the act of becoming prepares means that we are disciplined enough to make time worthwhile. We get over the feelings of procrastination. We dump the excuses that hold us back from attempting and we become more deliberate with what we are doing with our futures. Y'all get, get that? Second thing I want to share with you as I try to close is that preparation enhances our strategic thinking. Preparation enhances our strategic thinking. I'm not going to try to shout y'all today, but I just want you to get ready for a new year. Preparation enhances our strategic thinking. It is a well thought out plan. None of us are born master strategic thinkers. It's a skill that is born through practice, through exposure and experience. Regardless of what you are preparing for, you can sharpen the skill of your strategic thinking. You can become calculated in your healthy responses to what the Lord is allowing in your life. That's why when I wanted to become a critical thinker, I stopped playing checkers. And I allowed my friend Harry Van Holden to teach me how to play chess. Because checkers is just a series of easy moves. But checkers or, or, or chess is more than just a series of easy moves. It is calculated. Y'all help me. It is strategic. It is thinking about how the enemy moves in order to counter the enemy's movement. I want to suggest to you that some of us have to become better thinkers in our journey with Christ. We just can't sit around, name it, claim it, call it a it, and do not think and allow God to give us strategy of how to overcome the enemy who's coming to take away from us what the Lord has given. The devil is hoping you don't think. Because he recognized that if this mind that Christ has is in you, you will overcome death, sin, and the grave. And the devil does not want you to understand the power you have in God. I'm trying to close, church. Preparation also increases our flexibility and even our usefulness. Y'all get that? Y'all ready for this? Y all, y all, come on. Preparation increases our flexibility and our usefulness. It helps us to recalibrate or recalculate. Being more flexible, not being one-dimensional, not making God do the same thing the same way he blessed somebody else with in your life. But giving God his own prerogative, his own ideas to be utilized to make you into what you ought to be. I feel like closing this thing right now. Preparation increases our flexibility and our usefulness. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Philippians 4. Are y'all still praying with me? I can't see your comments. Are y'all still praying with me? In Philippians 4, he says, I know both. Listen to this. I know both how to live on almost nothing or with everything. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or with hunger pains, I've learned how to live with plenty or little. Then he says, for I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Do you get what he's saying? It doesn't matter where you put me. It doesn't matter how you describe me. It doesn't matter what you take from me. I'm still going to be God's child. It doesn't matter how long you hold me back. It doesn't matter how much you hold me down. It doesn't matter how much you break me. I'm still going to rise because I know who I am in God. I'm God's son. I'm God's child. I'm God's offspring. I'm made in the image of God. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm joined with Christ Jesus. I'm the child that they abandoned but God took in. Hey, God, help me, help me somebody. I don't even know if I can finish this thing today. We'll keep going next week. But I want you to know that God understands where you are. 
and God wants you to be flexible. So when you are flexible, things don't break you as easily. They might bend you and hurt you, but they won't break you. They might make you uncomfortable, but you'll still have enough resilience to keep moving forward, trusting God with everything he's given. I wish you high five yourself because of COVID-19 and tell yourself, I got resilience because the spirit of God is living in my life. I'm not a failure because God is my victor. I'm not a victim because God is my savior. I'm not a mistake because God is my sustainer. I'm not a problem because God is my solver. I'm not a hiccup because God made me the way I am. And if you don't like it, talk to God about it. But for me in my house, yeah, we're going to serve the Lord. Here it is, church. I got to close now. But preparation also develops resilience. And I hope you know now the race is not given to the strong, nor to the swift, but those who endure to the end. Here it is, and David is prepared to go fight Saul, to go fight Goliath. And Saul says, here you go, David, try my armor on. And I promise you, this is it today, and I'll come back next week. Saul's professional armor, worn temporarily by David, will become a hindrance to David's victory. I want you to know you will win. You will win with what God equips you with. Let me say it again. You can win with what God equips you with. I ain't comparing my armor with Saul who's afraid to fight. I'm going to try it on because he's my king and he's my example. But I got a greater example. His name is Jehovah Jireh the Lord my provider I got a great example he's the architect of humanity and all that there is I got a great example he is the great I am and there is not anyone who can be compared to him I got a great example he was born of a virgin but died on a rugged cross. I got a greater example. He's my lily of the valley and my bright and morning star. I got a great example. He is my shelter in a stormy blast. I got a better example. He's my healer when I was sick. He's my delivering from captivity. He's my help when I was in bondage. He's my freedom when I was a slave. He's my hope because I was down and desperate. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I got Jesus. But more than that, I'm glad that Jesus got me. And let me close now because I'm glad that God's promise still stands. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. I'm still in his hands. This is my confidence that God will never fail me. And as David prepares to fight Goliath, he disrobes from Saul's armor and becomes comfortable with what God has already given. May not look as prestige as what you have, but it will get the job done. You cannot use unconfirmed experiences where God is denied your personal testimony. I hope you heard me today that preparation is so important. I'm gonna close now. And I'll come back and ride this horse next week, hopefully, preparing for your next win. How do you do it? You must understand that the lesson is the blessing. Everything you've defeated in your past, everything you've experienced, God is saying, I want you to use it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. 2020 wasn't a bad year. It was a challenging year. But 2020 was exactly what God allowed. And if you believe that God is sovereign, you must believe that God allows some things to challenge our own faith. That God allows some things to happen to see what we're going to do, not what he's going to do. God allows some things to happen to see how we're going to respond. Because he's always responding for our good. But God wants to see if his goodness has translated into our actual goodness toward people. God wants to see if we call truth a lie or a lie to truth. And here it is now. We can't just say 2020 was a bad, wasted year. 
then that means that God wasn't a part of it. That means God was asleep all year long. God couldn't have been asleep. No, God couldn't have been asleep. No, God couldn't have been asleep. Because while I was sleeping, he was working on my issues. God couldn't have been asleep. No, God couldn't have been asleep. When I was sleeping, God was working on others around me to prepare them for oneness. God couldn't have been asleep. No, God couldn't have been asleep. But God was working and he was active. And I won't give the devil credit to say my whole 2020 was a horrible, bad year and I'm glad it's gone. No, no. I can't give the devil that kind of credit. I won't give the devil that kind of credit. I won't, give the, I won't give the liars that kind of credit. My God, my God. I, I know I got a little happy today, but that's all right. My God, our God helped us sustain through all the moments of craziness. Won't he do it? No, won't he do it? 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 Wow, what a wonderful word. Thank you so much for joining us today. If God has impacted your life through this ministry and you'd like to partner with us in meeting needs of people all around the world, you can do so by investing today. Also, don't forget to connect with us on social media. Share this message with a friend or family member and subscribe to our YouTube channel by simply clicking the bell below so you can be notified about more inspirational messages just like this.